Hello friends, welcome to Pioneer of Success. This is part 2 video of volume force in two phase flow. In the previous video, we have talked about how exactly we can incorporate an additional body force or volume force in two phase flow equation. And in relation to that, we actually took the electric field force that is coming from the Maxwell stresses. And in the previous video, we talked about the Maxwell stresses. We talked about how exactly the Maxwell stresses can be converted into the force or the force dense volumetric force density and that added to the momentum equation. So those things were clear a bit. And if you haven't watched the previous video, kindly watch that video. I'll put the link in the description box and Today we will be talking about the equation which is there in the electrostatics because whenever we are dealing with ComSol we have to understand the equation otherwise we will miss the information or we will miss the physics of the problem and without understanding the physics the problem will not be complete. So let us look at the equation which is there in the electrostatics. So we can see two equations written in COMSOL setting window and of the first equation is divergence of a vector d which is equal to rho v. So initially let us talk about this rho v. This rho v is nothing but the charge density. So we are dealing with electric field. One thing we should remember in order to have an electric field there must be charges. If there is a positive charge, there should also be a negative charge. But <clears throat> once this positive and negative charges are there, then only there will be an electric field in between these two. If we don't have any charge, we don't have any electric field. So obviously in the electric field equation, there will be a significance of the charge density. And this rho v is nothing but the charge density. So we don't know what this d is so we have to know about this d vector but before we know about this let us see the second equation which is there in the second equation we have a vector e which is nothing but the electric field vector that is equal to negative gradient of a scalar v here the scalar v is the electric field potential which is a scalar and the gradient of this electric field potential will give a vector and that is why these two equations are consistent in both the side that is left hand side and the right hand side. In the left hand side we have a vector in the right hand side also we have a vector. The first equation divergence of a vector is a scalar and in the right hand side also we have a scalar. So these equations are consistent but one thing we don't know what is the relation between the, this d and e and why exactly we are taking this d. So let us start with the name of the vector d. The vector d represents electric field displacement vector. Now as I proceed with my videos whenever I utter a particular terminology, I like to explain that terminology. So we need to explain the terminology electric field displacement. In order to understand that, I have opened a few Wikipedia pages because the information in those Wikipedia pages are given nicely and I always follow Wikipedia information. I feel those information is authentic and you can also follow that but let us not go into that let us discuss about our topic so initially let me talk about the charge density so in comsol we have seen there is a term charge density rho suffix v so charge density can have two components in in a material there could be free charge and there could be bound charges now briefly let me talk about the free charge. What is a free charge? Suppose we have a metal conductor and electron is flowing through the metal and that electron flow, that electronic charge is nothing but the free charge because it can move from a particular location to another location 
once you apply a potential difference be across this metal so this is a free charge so it can move now the bound charge is something that that is a charge but that cannot move from one place to another place it can actually orient their themselves and this orientation in the presence of external field is called the polarization so again i am telling this bound charges cannot move but once you apply an external electric field across a dielectric material then what happens induction takes place now what is indac induction in order to understand that let us look at this picture so this is a dielectric material in the absence of an electric field so in the absence of electric field the dielectric materials the charges which are the bound charges they orient randomly so that random orientation does not lead to any field contribution but what happens when we apply an external electric field when we apply an external electric field those bound charges orient themselves now if you look at the picture carefully this is the externally applied positive voltage so near this positive you can see all the negative charges orient themselves and similarly at the bottom near that external negative charge all the positive charges in the material orient themselves this phenomenon is called polarization if you have a dielectric material which needs minimum electric field to do this particular orientation then the dielectric permittivity is very high so whether these things happens very readily or it, there is a resistance of happening this thing that determines by this proportionality constant which is called permittivity so here we are actually telling the physical significance of permittivity so if you have a high permittivity material that means you apply a very small electric field across that dielectric and it will show you induction it will show you the polarization readily so here now we go to the previous page here there is a relation between the bound charges and the polarization because polarization happens for the bound charges only and that quantitative relation is divergence of p is equal to the bound charges now mathematically if we think if the divergence of p is zero that means there is no polarization if there is no polarization that means there is no bound charges or no effective bound charges so this is the relation between these two now let me think about the gauss's law according to the gauss's law the divergence of electric field vector is equal to 1 by epsilon 0 into rho where rho is the charge density now again when you talk charge density it will be sum of bound charges and free charges so they have actually replaced the total charge by the bound charges and the free charges actually this is rho so you can see this this rho is equal to rho f plus rho b so this rho f is rho f and the rho b is actually given by the divergence of p because both are same because rho b is nothing but equal to divergence of p so basically what they have done they have replaced rho by rho f plus rho b and then again in in place of rho b they have placed minus divergence of p so now what we can do is we can take this divergence of p in the left hand side and then it gives divergence of epsilon 0 e plus p is equal to rho f so the free charge density is equal to this and this particular thing is called electric field displacement vector so electric field displacement vector is epsilon 0 e plus polarization p and they have actually mentioned this in the front line but i have explained in terms of the charge density the 
free charge density, the bound charge density and from there I have explained this. Now for our cases, for simplistic cases, we will assume that there is no polarization. So this will be zero. So the electric field vector or the electric field displacement will be equal to epsilon zero into E. Now, if you look at COMSOL and if I go to the charge conversation, conservation equation, you can see these things are given. So initially, in the equation we have seen like divergence of d is equal to rho v but here if in the charge conservation we see instead of divergence of d it is written epsilon 0 epsilon r into e so you can you can equate it from with this equation so you know, i mean the p is 0 so d is epsilon 0 e and for a material which has a dielectric, relative dielectric permittivity epsilon r, for that there will be a multiplication with epsilon r. So we, we don't have any polarization here for this particular electrostatic module, but we are dealing with this epsilon 0 epsilon r e, which is nothing but the d vector. So basically we are solving this equation. So once we solve this equation, if you just try to visualize it, what we can do is we have electric field E and if we replace this E by negative divergence of V, so it will negative gradient of V, it will become divergence of this constants will come out divergence of negative gradient of V and divergence of gradient V is nothing but the second order derivative or the Laplacian operator. So ultimately you have Laplacian of E is equal to rho V and which is nothing but the Poisson equation. So basically we are solving for the Poisson equation. So we have to solve, so uh, we, are, we are dealing with Laplacian of uh, uh, vector field E. So Laplacian not a vector field, Laplacian of electric field potential. So Laplacian of electric field potential is equal to rho v, which is again the Poisson equation. So Laplacian of v will, if you solve it, it will give you the solution for v or electric field potential. So we had already solved it. If we look at the results, we can see we, can, we have actually solved for the potential. So this simulation is not completed. So we are not seeing the result. So what I can do is I can show you the result after the simulation runs. I'll hold the video for a second. Yeah, we have solved for the electric field and we have taken a stationary solution for the understanding purpose only. And you can see the electric field is already solved. So here we have a higher potential and this part was grounded. So we have a distribution of electric field. So this electric field distribution we have solved and that solution came from the Poisson equation that I have talked about. And what will happen basically in this particular simulation while these materials will move through this pipe or through this solution space then the dielectric permittivity of the material will change. I mean, the material is constant. Suppose this particular drop is coming here. So in this particular zone, the dielectric permittivity will change. And that is why the electric field distribution at this part will change. And this electric field distribution will be a function of space. And that is why it's a field basically. And based on that field, the stresses will be different at different points on the solution space. And based on that, there will be some forces acting around these two droplets and which may actually allow them to coalesce or sometimes due to these stresses, droplets also split into two different droplets. So those things are there will come with all the simulations one by one. So today we have explained the equation whichever is there in the electrostatics in 
upcoming video we'll talk we'll talk about maxwell's traces in detail so that our understanding of two phase flow with electric field becomes very clear so today i stop here i hope this video series are helpful for your research work if it is so kindly subscribe to our channel so that we get more motivation to upload videos thank you